a sequel is coming to Ark, conveniently named Ark 2, and unless you've been living under a rock, you may have seen the Vin Diesel fronting trailer, preparing us for a seemingly primitive return to a new take on the six year old survival game. And with that being so old, most are expecting a complete facelift on every possible mechanic we've come to love in this dinosaur gunning game. But what are the things you want most? You're right kids, it's Ras Clark and welcome to another top 10 as voted by you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share around and let's get into it. So in at number 10 is Ocean Water Physics Rework. Fluid is a somewhat ambiguous word in the world of video games, more often than not being incredibly static in the sense of streams, rivers and oceans. And whilst Ark 1 housed many a secret beneath its waves, it lacked exactly that, waves. With the introduction of Unreal Engine 5, Ark 2's foundation of running upon, the devs trialling and testing as much with their sister game Atlas, and of course much newer games realising the potential of good ocean physics. It seems this incredibly likely rework will make the light of day, and certainly doesn't stop at waves. Running water and its effects on weighing down clothes, looking at games such as Scum, tides pulling in and out, unleashing forces that push you around, hinted at by Gen 1 whirlpools, in turn providing a genuine fear of what lurks below creating a heightened desire to a hopeful, attentive look at what sea creatures there will be. In at number 9, less story, more survival. Exactly what it says on the tin, and whilst it may be contradicted later on in this list, it's easy to see why many agree with this one. Overlooking the fantastically woven lore, taking you from dinosaur survival to alien scum tech blasting, there's a collective feeling of providing a narrative can dictate the nature of gameplay, certainly heightened by Genesis 1 and 2, driving the plot forward, focusing on missions to steer us towards the end goal, which in turn certainly numbed the hardcore survival experience we first played somewhat reignited by many hardcore survival playthroughs uploaded in recent times. So perhaps there is a way to slow that story progression, but needless to say, many yearn to be against the elements once again, and not story driven to a tech boosted flyabout, which you'll be pleased the devs have acknowledged, stating Ark 2 will indeed be a once again primarily primitive game like those early days of its predecessor. In at number 8, a new in-depth taming system. One of the fundamental functions of Ark Survival Evolved, taming, for the most part has become a standard affair of knockout said creature and feed one its preferred food through the bum bum until tamed. Noting with most recent maps, Wildcard have become more ambitious, creating new methods to make a wild dino a newfound friend. The excitement of this and then was figuring out what worked best for the most efficient taming method. And with a sequel, a complete overhaul of kibble or preferred foods is certainly a desired one. Not only that, but perhaps even types of tranks. Whilst it was great to see a variety in Ark 1, why not be more diverse in what tranks deal torpor depending on its creature, forcing you to source certain resources for that all important wild you want to bag as well as new mechanics such as hunting via footprints, distracting with smoke bombs, and herding with fire being a particular feature you would love to see. In at number 7, Gear Customization. An easy entry to agree with and highly possible considering the recent artwork pieces discovered, seeming to use bones from particular dinos, because that's exactly what you'd like to see able to craft and modify weapons, saddles and armour depending on the creature mats you possess. Ark 1 certainly provided the foundations for this, with hide and chitin required especially, but imagine a limitless range of gear, ever changing depending if you use the sharp piercing teeth of a rex to craft a potent spear or the hardened plates of a stego to make your armour incredibly durable. Considering, once again, the gear types we've already seen in the very few artwork shots provided, there stands a chance Wildcard may have already beaten us to this punch, and if so, would alone open up a potential infinitely unique option to players that want their own style on display. 
In at number 6, more structure sets. One of the most integral parts of Ark, building has defined the game's progression in both a player's path and development, sadly hindered with memory limitations. Noting we almost got a completely new structure tier with Genesis 2. Considering now the huge range of ideas provided by mostly mods, the sadly unsupported Primitive Plus offerings and a huge community entirely based on building. We can only hope with a bigger and better optimised game will come a bible sized catalogue of opportunities. Ranging from what a structure looks like, to how it snaps, to how useful in survival it actually can be. Ultimately driving us away from the boxed metal or tech bases we're so used to now. In at number 5, a bonding or trust mechanic. Stepping back in time before barely a 3D game had been created. It's a wonder why such a system wasn't in place to begin with, allowing your time with certain creatures to improve them and their abilities the more you cared. In turn, could actually see less dinos being tamed, and progression slowed as you undoubtedly spent more time with Dave the Dino, potentially unlocking perks the more you take care of them. Plainly to overhaul the imprint system, and be integral with all dinos wild or otherwise, Caring for a creature would go way beyond the odd baby cuddle, and in doing so would offer you a stronger, but equally more riskier prized dino to lose. In at number 4, Improved Creature Management. A popular yet unresolved choice, whistling and managing creatures around the world can certainly be a cumbersome thing, stunted sometimes by your creature just not reacting as intended. And perhaps that's simply its reasoning for being so high. Aggressive whistled creatures, for example, sometimes just don't react as quick as intended, depending on range, making or breaking a win. The introduction of the Exo Mech certainly introduced a great new range of management opportunities, sadly locked to those that could obtain one. But imagining this mechanic especially, refined and tuned to perfectly pinpoint a destination, combined with other combat whistling opportunities, would certainly flesh out a much needed function within the game. In at number 3, a deeper PvE experience. As mentioned earlier, contradicting a previous entry, at least for the PvE player, story progression is a necessity for longevity. A world of opportunities is only as fun as the secrets it hides. And whilst Arc 1 offered a great delivery of journey, unveiling new secrets with each map, the progression to each map ending never seemed too far away. Whilst missions offered some side quest guide, it seemed many felt they missed the mark slightly, feeling detached from the survival experience, and perhaps were overthought. A side quest can be something as simple as finding or killing a particular creature. Cute reward offered, which yes, were given through missions, but lacked variation and real achievement, somewhat led by scale. Secrets certainly were lacked in the latest offering, best showcased through the mod maps available, with great examples being Life's Labyrinth on Ragnarok, or the jumping puzzle on centre, completely optional gauntlets that were a real joy to beat than even the in-game rewards given. Whilst it can't be ignored that Wildcard have certainly offered a deep diving story to discover, it just feels there's so much more that can be offered to keep the ride a wild one. In at number 2, NPC or AI survivors. An incredibly popular opinion amongst many of you. An agreeable one seeing we live in a world most survival games offer some form of worldly characters to encounter. On one hand, the desire for NPCs, survivors that could hopefully resonate with the law. No guesses as to who in particular, but able to interact should that be to simply trade with, accept quests from, or recruit for especially those solo survivors looking for some friend in Ark other than ones that eat raw meat or berries. On the other hand, and highly plausible considering the trailer, actual AI enemy survivors you'll encounter and need to go toe to toe against, possibly requiring a heightened combat experience in the process. Whilst the feeling of deserted isolated survival is unmatched in Ark at times, knowing there could be a friend or foe out there in the wilderness, regardless of playstyle, could certainly provide new elements to magnify a yearn for exploration. And before we get to number one, let's just have a quick special mention to the features you want that didn't just make the cut.
And here it is in the number one and winning by an overwhelming milestone, Dynamic Clever Creatures. A clear thing you want most in Arc 2, an ever evolving world in a game you'd expect as much from. Firstly, dinos to act like more territorial creatures, surviving within their natural habitats, hunting and helping their groups or families to survive, raising their own young, and naturally reacting when approached by friend or foe, and with most migrating when weather requires, as seasons would create an ever-changing game to keep up with, as summer turns to winter, creatures moving to other areas as a result, keeping you forever on your toes to not only adapt with the times, but understand, track and hunt each creature to the new locations they've taken solace in. Longevity is certainly one of the most required elements in a sequel to a game that ran for 6 years, and to brave a new horizon, depending on the month you logged in, could really set Ark 2 apart from being just a sequel to a living, breathing world. And there we go, that completes the top 10 list. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, comment below and let me know. What more top 10s would you like to see in future? My name's Ross Clark. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And as always, ah, peace out.